So first question I had for you, are there free or low cost performance tools that are available to ops folks? Or is it all just you know high end, super expensive stuff? I think there's definitely uh, performance monitoring tools out there. And, and I think that the if you look at this conference, there's so many people here. And I think that that is a reflection of the performance community as a whole, that there really is a lot of open source activity there. People want to share what they've learned and uh, what they're doing. Right. So. So uh, with cloud architectures, what do you see as the main pain points there? Uh, I think a big part of it is the dynamic nature of them. So you've got new nodes that are coming up all the time. I was just having a conversation with some of the attendees, and they were saying that they were really frustrated because they're using some older monitoring systems that are free and open source, but they aren't ready to handle new nodes coming up and old nodes going away on a daily basis. So that's just that's still a big problem for it. So handling that dynamic environment is one thing. Uh, another thing is that there is still a lot of uncertainty around what the different providers are offering. You know, what's Amazon? How do they compare to, to Rackspace and, and some of these other things? And what are the different performance characteristics you can expect? And each provider segments it all very differently, right? Amazon has different instance types and mm. uh, other places charge, you know, you can get more I.O. and pay for that separately than more CPU. Mm -hmm. So that's really challenging, I think, right. uh, to, to understand what that stuff looks like. So what are the big trade-offs between going with a cloud architecture versus a more traditional one? So at SEO Moz, that's they're a startup. They've got a team of seven engineers, low budgets for everything. Mm -hmm. And um, so what works out really well with going in the cloud is that it's so low cost. But um, over time, and again, I was talking to some uh, attendees, and they're a bigger enterprise, and they say that Amazon and other cloud providers are just more expensive, right? That they, they have the scale at those enterprises to afford to buy all the upfront stuff and to run the data center. And for them, it's more efficient to, to go outside, you know, go with a traditional infrastructure than with a cloud. Now, Amazon's a big one, obviously. Does that come with any caveats? Is it wholly dependable at this point? Uh, it's... I, there's, there's, they're reaching out to a lot of startups, and I think that it's, it's definitely ready for startups. And there's tons of startups that are out there. SEO Moz is completely on, uh, not completely, but for a large, large portion of the infrastructure is in Amazon. Uh, for there, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think that there's still a lot of, um, people are still afraid of it. Um, and I suspect that increasingly that's going to, um, become more of a superstition, sort of a, well, we want to control it, even if that means costing more, even if that means that our end reliability is lower. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, the S3, for instance, they just came out with a study that said that their reliability in terms of data loss is basically perfect, that you, you, if you have 10,000 objects or something like that, you can expect to lose one of those objects in 10,000 years. That, I mean, so it's, <laughs> they really are concerned about these factors, and they're producing, they're publishing the results to, that back that stuff up. And there's third parties that are measuring these things, too. So you can actually get the data to, to see if they are reliable, if they okay. are production ready for your environment. Now, the last question I had for you, and it's kind of an odd one, but do you see overlap between the SEO world and the performance world, I mean, do they exist in the same space or are we two talking about two completely different worlds? I, absolutely, there's a huge, tremendous overlap. And again, I was talking to some attendees here, so, so it's, not even, it's not even a revolutionary idea that they see, they understand that performance and SEO are I intimately related in a lot of ways. And uh, there, was a, there was a talk, one of the keynotes today, um, was a representative from Google, and he pointed out that it, Google came out some time ago and said, performance and load time and that, that po for portion of the user experience is a signal that goes right into ranking. And so it's really important that you be looking at these things. And uh, in Google Webmaster Tools, they actually provide mm -hmm. you their measurements of your site's performance. And they'll give you some example pages. And they'll even give you suggestions. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just like if you ran page speed. They're basically doing the same thing. And they're saying, the, this, is, this is how fast your page is. This is how it compares to the rest of the web. You're in the 77th percentile. I mean, they actually give you all of that data, and they even give you the suggestions to solve those problems. Because they want you to have that uh, experience, because they really care about what their search users are going to get the experience. So, Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank really you. appreciate it.